Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Let's Build That App channel. Hope you guys are having a good morning. In today's video, I want to show you guys a little bit of a developer's secret on how to improve the performance of our Android applications. More specifically, I want to show you how to use the view holder pattern for all of the list view components inside of our Android apps. So a very, very long time ago when I was still working corporate, I was building out an Android application for a company called Touch of Modern. And what we noticed was a huge performance gain with smoother scrolling, lesser memory usage, and also fewer crashes after our initial crack at this view holder implementation. And so with performance gains such as these, we also noticed a huge uptick in the sales for our Android platform. Now, because I knew exactly what these sales numbers were, it became very easy for me, personally me, to negotiate for a higher salary raise when employee reviews were getting into full swing. All right, now some of the folks that are watching right now, you're probably wondering exactly what the view holder pattern is. Well, the idea behind this pattern is to render each one of our rows for our list as fast as possible. And so the way we're going to accomplish this task is to reduce the number of times we call find view by ID inside of each one of our rows. So this method called find view by ID as it turns out, it's very expensive to make this call because it has to traverse the entire view's hierarchy to find each individual subview that we want to modify. For example, configure its text. So if you think about the layouts in your Android applications, you can have 10 or even up to 20 subviews for each one of your rows inside of your list. For example, inside of the Touch of Modern application, each one of our rows for the products that we were trying to sell had a subview for the product name, the product description, an image for the actual product itself, the price all the way on the right side, as well as a bunch of other product related subviews. So how does the view pattern actually help us? Well, instead of calling find view by ID for each one of our rows, we're going to use the view holder pattern to save a reference to each one of our rows subviews, and then we're going to use this reference later during the view rendering life cycles. All right, so let's now take a look at Android Studio and see exactly how we can implement this view holder pattern. All right, guys, so we're now opened up with Android Studio and we're using the list view LBTA project. So this project comes from last episode, which is episode two of the list view introduction series. So make sure to get caught up on that lesson first before you continue on with this video. And basically our main activity is responsible for rendering out this list view right here. And at the very bottom, we have this custom adapter that provides us with these five strings for five names of just people that exist in this world. And this is where that list is being rendered out. And you see row number one, two, three, four, all of these pieces of strings are coming from get view. And we have names that get position for the name in bold and then the row number at the very bottom right there. So I want to show you guys how to use the view holder pattern so that we can avoid this very expensive call of find view by ID. So let me show you what happens as you scroll through the list. If we have some more names inside of this list right here. So I'm going to go up to the top and copy a few of these lines just to get a longer list for me to show you guys how this view holder works. So I'm gonna click that instant run and we get a list of roughly uh, 24, 25 rows inside of our view right now. So the way I want to kind of illustrate what is going on is I wanna make a couple of log statements inside of get view and I'm going to say log dot perhaps verbose and I'm gonna use the tag of, uh, let's see, get view and we're going to say making or calling find view by ID, which is expensive. And let me copy and paste this line down here as well, because we're making find view by ID uh, using a different name, but it is still being called nonetheless. So I'm going to run my application now and let's see how many times that log statement is being printed out at the very bottom. So you see it is being called a lot of times, right? And like I was mentioning earlier, find view by ID is very expensive because it has to traverse the entire view hierarchy 
of your rows. If you had a lot of subviews that you're trying to configure inside of your row, this would take a very long time. So I want to show you guys how to avoid this by using the view holder pattern. But first, uh, before we get into that, I would like to show you a nice little trick of using this convert view parameter inside of your get view method call. And basically convert view is your row that you get back every time you have this get view call. And you can actually just use convert view to represent your row instead of using the layout inflator to inflate another one of these rows. And uh, inflate is actually really expensive as well. So we were trying to avoid this as much as possible. So convert view, I want to show you guys how to check if it's actually null by saying if convert view is equal equal to null, then we have to apply this layout inflator logic. So let me just copy and paste that in there. And so row main is inside of this if check. That's why we see the red right here, here, and here. So the way to fix this is to go up here and just say, uh, let's see, val row main. Uh, let it be of type view and so row main i want to remove that val right there i want to set row main inside of this if check and then i'm going to use the else row main is equal to the entire convert view all right so all of the code is okay if i try to run it uh, using the apply change everything is going to be just fine so it looks just like what we had previously now, what is going on here for some of you guys that aren't used to uh, the Android code? Well, for this first if check, we're checking if convert view is null, meaning we have to inflate a new row. And inside of here, we're saying, well, we have our row as convert view. So just set uh, row main as that view. So this way we don't have to spend all that time inflating all of our views if we have it as this convert view parameter. So that's the first thing I would like to do. And now the question is how do I avoid making all of these find view by ID calls down inside of my list right here. So if I scroll up and down, you'll see, hopefully you'll see some of these calls. Let me make a fresh run using the play button up at the top and there we go if i keep scrolling up and down you'll see a ton of these find view by id calls like so and you'll see the timestamp change as well so find view by id is very expensive and i'm going to avoid this call by using this view holder class that i'm going to call or create down below get view so Instead of Java, you can create these inner classes by just typing out code. So let's make it a private class and call it a class of view holder. And to construct this class, we're, have, we're going to set up two properties with this val syntax. So val name text view, let it be of type text view, val position text view, and also let it be of text view. So the way to read this bit of Kotlin code is you're pretty much setting up view holder with these two properties that you can instantiate your class with and also access it later on. And I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. Okay. So with this view holder class, I am going to set it up inside of this convert view check. Every time we're uh, required to initialize a new row, I'm also going to initialize a view holder. So let's say val, say val view holder equals a new view holder object. So uh, because this requires us to use uh, two parameters to initialize it, I'm going to get those two parameters of name text view and position text view before I initialize that class. So let me just cut that, paste that in there, cut this position text view, paste that in there. And now I can initialize view holder with name text view as well as position text view. Okay, so that's good. And what do I need to do now? Well, name text view and position text view, uh, these two are actually missing because we don't have access to this scope inside of this if check. So I'll fix that uh, a little bit later. And uh, what I want to do with this view holder now 
is to set it up on row main. So row main dot tag. So tag is just some kind of property on view objects that you can set it up as anything you want. So the tag, I'm going to go ahead and set it up as that view holder object, all right? So now that find view by ID is not being called, I'm gonna comment that out and comment that out as well. So finally, to fix this bit of code right here, you can get the view holder out of the uh, row main by just using the accessor of tag. And then view holder has these properties on it called name text view. So name text view, hopefully I can get it. So view holder has this property here, but first you have to cast this as a view holder like that. And then now name text view is available as one of the properties. So you can say dot text equals this stuff down here. Let me copy that, hit the paste and comment that out. Um, you can change this as well to access the view holder and the position text view property, which is this guy right there. So let me copy and paste all of that and try to run this code by using the instant change or instant apply. It's going to run my app again and you see all of the list, the names and the row numbers being rendered out correctly. So how do we check whether or not we're actually calling find view by ID inside of our code? Well, let me just uncomment out that, cut that out, and then paste that in there. So I'm going to run my code again and let's see how many times find view by ID is being called inside of the console here. So you see three times right here, right? For each one of these rows. And let's see if I scroll down, we get a couple of more columns. So we get four in total. And if we keep on scrolling up and down, you'll see that we don't call this ever again because convert view is very intelligent, right? We only initialize the convert view every time we need to inflate a new view for a new row that we need in order to render out the list correctly. So because we already have all, our, all of the rows inside of our lists, we're just continuously recycling each one of our rows. Hence, the code in here is never being called again. So that's kind of how the view holder pattern uh, works out for us. So you can remove a lot of these commented lines out like that, like that, and everything should be good. So that's kind of the entirety of today's lesson. And before I wrap up, I would like to show you guys a couple of uh, enhancements that we can include inside of our code right now. So if you are working with Kotlin, one thing that you should be aware of is a library called extensions. So if I can pull it up, which is this guy right here. So inside of the app module, you have this build.gradle file. And if you have this plugin applied to your project, you can go back to your main activity and instead of using find view by ID and using this ID guide, you can instead use val of, let's see, text view equals row main, and you can just straight up call name text view like that. And basically this line right here and this line right here does kind of the same thing. I believe using the extensions, uh, this does access some kind of cache where you don't actually make this call over and over. So one important aspect of this extension call is that you have to be aware of what it's importing inside of your project. So it, it automatically helps you import this Kotlin X Android synthetic main row main view star. And that's what really allows you to access uh, this name text view property. And very similar to the position text view, you can say, let's see, name text view and val p text view equals row main dot position text view. And this gets you this right here. So if I were to remove or to refactor some of this code, I would instead comment out all of that stuff and just say row main right here, name text view. And then uh, row main uh, position text view. This way I can remove some of these properties in here. And I believe this is already readable enough for me to consider it okay and checking it into the code base or the repository. Another thing I do want to mention is that 
when we are inflating our views using this context. So I don't know if you guys remember, but in the last lesson, uh, we had to access this layout inflator from this M context property, which belongs to this class, which is up here. My custom adapter has M context. You really don't need this M context uh, inside of this class. Instead, you can use view group, which is this. And so I'm going to paste that in there and just get the context from the view group. So I think you can access it using the two exclamation marks or bangs and you should be okay. So let's run this app, make sure it works, make sure the, less, uh, the list is rendered out correctly. And here's what we get. So really good stuff there. This means that we don't need this initializer if we don't want it. So I'm gonna comment that out, comment out that. Uh, okay, maybe not that, but that. And then up here, I believe I can remove this as well. So let's get, get rid of that. And then I think we can get rid of that. So let me run this one final time to make sure the code compiles and so that you guys can download a working project. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this entire series on the introduction of list views for Android using Kotlin. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you wanna download the source code for today's project, make sure to check it out at my website at letsbuildthatapp.com. You can find the link down in the description below. Now, if you're wondering where to go from here, you can check out the documentation on recycler views where you have to implement this view holder pattern in order to render out an efficient list of rows. All right, make sure to leave a like for the video if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe to the channel for more Android videos like this. Don't forget, keep on coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.